There's a lot of characters in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, but my personal favorite that carried me through the majority of the campaign into the endgame level 100 stuff is... Uh, well... Oh, there he is. Yodara. This powerful tiny death ball just so happens to also look exactly like my little hamster running around. No, really. See? You can put most of the components of this build together pretty early in the story mode, and it's going to give you some incredible damage output with high survivability, since it focuses on damage negation and invulnerability. This build will also chew right through the higher rank endgame content, and is perfectly suited for soloing bosses, if you feel the need to try that. So let's get into it. I'm Alex, and hey, if you happen to be new here, hit subscribe. Alright, so the main skills of this build are Perpetual Rotation, Trice Blade, Hymn of the Hundreds, and Empty Mist. The sequence is to cast Perpetual Rotation to instantly get three Shroud Marks, which makes the Trice Blade buff give a 100% attack boost until you take damage. Then you're going to put on Hymn of the Hundreds, which is a buff that negates a set number of incoming hits, which helps to protect that attack buff. Then you can pop Empty Mist pretty much whenever, but it can be held for longer and gets a special finisher if you use it when you have three Shroud Marks charged. If you haven't tried this character yet, Shroud Marks are unique to Yodara, and you get one stack of those marks for every combo finisher. The Shroud Marks will then be consumed to amplify the power or potency of his next skill. After landing a combo finisher though, he can continually chain into a normal attack string, which lessens the amount of hits needed to get back to a combo finisher again. Eventually, the string will just look like this, over and over and over and over. Another huge bonus is that you get temporary invulnerability during the startup of this combo finisher animation. You can also learn to use that invulnerability to your advantage by dodging before the final hit of the combo or before the combo finisher to delay activation of it. That'll let you keep the chain going while being able to reposition, or that can help you time the invulnerability to power straight through an attack without taking any damage. That combo finisher and vulnerability, along with the buff from Him of the Hundreds, both will make you very hard to hit, and keeps that 100% attack buff from Trice Blade protected, since that will end if you take a hit. There's another damage bonus you can get by timing a release of your lunge attack right before getting hit to trigger a counter. That gives you the supplementary damage buff if you time it correctly. You can also trigger straight out of that counter into the final combo finisher sequence, making for a potent combo. By the way, there's a few other ways to chain it right into a combo finisher, like after the last hit of Empty Mist, after you go upward and bash the ground with Sky Shatter, after the rush forward slash attack from Awakening, after landing a counter with Tit for Tat, after the final hits of Flashing Void, and right after performing a Link attack. And one more thing to note, the skill Perpetual Rotation I mostly use to quickly get three Shroud Marks, but it also has a secondary effect. If you cast Perpetual Rotation when you already have three Shroud Marks, it'll instead instantly recharge all of your skills. Here's my character at the time of making this, but it's by no means a maxed out character. I'm using the Fudo Sword for its higher base damage, but any weapon works really if you want to do this earlier on. My stats mostly focus on attack, stamina to boost attack according to how high my health is, tyranny which provides a percentage attack increase at the cost of some health, the damage cap bonus which I'll touch on in a sec, and combo finisher damage increasing the power of those invulnerable combo finishers you'll be constantly throwing out. Earlier in the game, you probably won't need those damage cap skills, so you can sub in something else like critical chance or critical damage. But in the late game, the damage cap skills become massively important. You'll find that all of your attack synergies will be capped to a point, limiting their outgoing damage, but the damage cap skill will raise that maximum ceiling. You can cross your fingers that you get a drop of the damage cap sigils, or in the skill tree, there are some nodes that you can unlock that extend the overall damage cap. So overall, you're going to be triggering Trice Blade when you have three Shroud Marks. Make sure you then trigger him of the Hundreds to avoid taking damage, and then focus on chaining into combo finishers over and over to pile on the juice. 
If you have any further questions about this build, hit me up on Twitter X at BoomstickAlex or down in the comments here. Before I wrap this up though, give it up for Pebble's epic stunt work today. Crushed it. Yes, he did receive compensation. Now, if you guys want to see how I actually play this build, I'm going to close out the video with some raw, unedited solo boss fightness. So thanks for checking this out, everybody. I'll see you next time.